Okay, I think we're live. So hello everyone. Welcome back to another virtual shadowing session. Today we have the wonderful Dr. Rupert Monkhouse, who's going to be sharing a little bit about being a general dentist. So you could go ahead whenever you're ready. Hi, so yeah, uh, cheers for, for both of you for inviting me on. Um, I said my name's uh, Rupert. Uh, I am a dentist based out of, well, I live in London, but I work in a place called uh, Pangbourne, which is near Reading, uh, which is about 30 minutes away from, from London. And uh, yeah, I'm a general dentist, and we're just going to go through a little bit about the journey into dental school. Um, but yeah, already chatting before we launched with the... Uh, yeah, it's very different uh, in the States, so I'll try and do as much relevant stuff as I can. A little bit then about my journey after dental school and sort of day-to-day -day practice and a bit of sort of a work experience style, sort of little case run through uh, about sort of an area of my interest, because obviously if you're hoping to go into dental school, you're going to usually have done some shadowing or things like that, which maybe in the COVID environment has been a bit tricky. So I'll try and give a little bit of an insight into, into that sort of day to day. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of the journey into dental school, in the UK anyway, um, typically you're asked to do a couple of weeks of work experience around the ages of 16, 17, because in the UK you can go in as an undergraduate in what you call college or, or whatnot so you don't have to do a pre-med or anything like that so you can go straight in so you have to decide quite early that you want to go and do it um and you need to decide your um a levels your sort of uh, final exams before uh, university or college and um, so around sort of the age of 16 or 17 i was doing my work experience about like two weeks in two separate practices and then you have to do something in the UK called the UCAT, or when I did it, it's called the UK CAT, which is a, an aptitude test. It's got various different bits to it, spatial reasoning, and maths, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and in my time, it was three A's at A level in your final exams in school. Uh, but now I think it's a star and A's and things like that. Um, so I did my three A levels in biology and chemistry and geography. In the UK, anyway, you have had to do biology and chemistry, but I think obviously with the states, you have some pre-med and things like that, which I guess covers a lot of a lot of that. Uh, and I went to study at King's College London in the school um, in 2012, graduating, coming up to five years ago in 2017. Uh, and there's a lovely pixelated picture of it there. Um, a really great place to learn, lots of world-renowned teachers, which was great. And uh, yeah, five years is undergraduate uh, again obviously it's a bit different for you guys with the uh, with the post um, postgraduate kind of style um, so in terms of as asked to talk about my specialty um, but I, I don't really have one so to speak or at least from the UK perspective so I'm working at the moment as a general dentist in private practice so in the UK we have NHS practice which is the healthcare system and then you can have mixed practices where you do a bit of that and a bit of private. And I work in solely private, so all my patients are, are fee-paying private patients. Um, but I have a particular interest in removable prosthodontics, which is dentures. Um, so replacing one or multiple or all missing teeth uh, with removable appliances. And I'm going to run through a little case with you there. And part of what I do in my spare time or out of work time is uh, sharing cases and teaching about uh, dentures both online and in person around the UK and I run a weekly dentistry podcast called Impression Club Live um, which you can get wherever you get your podcasts as you see on the bottom uh, and I also do a monthly free newsletter which is other people's contributions and actually um, the second issue of that went out this morning um, if you're interested in some free dental content www.impressionclub.co.uk you can sign up for that and i will fire over the newsletter to you when i can um so i mean in terms of practice when you graduate in the uk if you want to go and work in the nhs at any point you have to go and do something called foundation training uh, which is um you're sort of selected nationally you're allocated into a into a region of, of the country uh, and i did my year up in hull which is in the north of england and you're doing general dentistry and you have a supervisor within the practice that sort of mentors you and, and introduces you into the world of, of NHS practice. 
and it's quite in Hull anyway, very busy, lots of patients that needed lots of work doing, so it was a really good experience. I then got my first independent job in Fulham, where I still live now, in southwest London. Uh, and this was very, very busy. It was very full on. I was doing five and a half days a week. So I was working every weekday and alternate Saturdays. And uh, it was a very busy national health sort of community style of practice. And um, so it was very intense, lots of patients, lots of when you were seeing you know, 40 odd patients a day. Uh, and the area that we're working in, what we call high needs, and lots of work doing, lots of billings, lots of gum disease, lots of treatment. So it was a good opportunity to improve skills and deal with a wide range of people. And we'd have some of the houses around the corner worth millions of pounds. And you'd get those patients coming in. I used to treat one of the, the members of parliament for, for Fulham and things like that. But then you'd also have the really poorest of the poor, you know, even have sort of the um, asylum seekers and, and things like that. So you get a full range and you're dealing with a lot of people there. And whilst I was doing this, I also started my other Saturdays uh, in the practice that I now work in, still in, in Reading. So I was doing every Saturday as well in that time. And over time, I gradually built up the other practice a bit more before leaving the NHS dentistry at the start of, of lockdown. Um, so COVID sort of got in the way of that a little bit and started by lockdown here in March 2020. And, and I was working part-time in Reading and then part-time in my hometown of Worcester. So I was traveling backwards and forwards, sort of two, three hours, two times a week to do that. Um, but then after a year, so about this time last year, I became just full-time in that one practice. So my current practice now, I'm now what I'd call full-time. So I do four weekdays and those alternate Saturdays and then spend my Thursdays doing my extra bits, editing my photos and creating content. Uh, and that's a place called Woodbury House Dental Practice. So it's a specialist referral practice. So we're very fortunate to work with someone like that. And we work with all the different specialties within dentistry. So we've got a prostodontist who does the bridges, dentures, implants, that kind of thing. A periodontist, which is gum treatments, orthodontist, braces, or surgeon does all of our difficult wisdom teeth extractions and things like that. And we have two endodontists doing root canals. And then I'm one of the four general dentists and we have two hygienists as well. So we've got pretty much everything covered uh, and we, we treat quite a lot of high, high quality, high standard work. Um, but general dentistry is what I do. So the nice bit with it is your day to day can vary massively. So you can be doing something different every day. So like today, for instance, I had a couple of patients with emergencies, you know, a couple of broken teeth, things like that always happens on a Friday, uh, a couple of checkups. And then I had some surgery, did some extractions and fitted a bridge to replace the teeth. Uh, and then I did a extensive clean for a very anxious patient with some sedation. So, you know, you do a bit of everything, but other things, you know, my day tomorrow, I'm working tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning will be a lot of family dentistry, you know, family of four coming in for their checkups and things like that. It's nice you get to build these relationships with people and things like that. And um, some routine fillings perhaps. And then my bit that I enjoy dentures and more cosmetic work as well, which isn't isn't really my bag in terms of veneers and things like that. Um, other bits that you may do in general dentistry, gum treatments, gum disease and root canal treatments and things like that for infected teeth. But in my practice, we just send those onto the specialist. So I don't do much of that anymore. Uh, although I do enjoy the odd bit of it here and there, but I don't do too much now. So I want to do a little bit of a virtual shadowing about dentures because that's more my sort of area of, of passion. Um, so a denture, as we said earlier, is a removable replacement for missing teeth, and that can be to replace a single tooth that could be a temporary option while you're waiting for an implant or healing for a bridge or anything like that. Uh, or it could be to replace all of the teeth. So you've got that full range there. They're either made out of acrylic plastic or they can have metal parts to strengthen them and lighten them. And you can get sort of nylon flexible dentures, but I don't do any of those. And it usually actually involves the multiple different disciplines in the whole course of treatment. You maybe treat a bit of gum disease, maybe do some fillings, take some teeth out, uh, maybe do some crowns. So I, that's why I like it. You get a look at the big picture and, and really plan out these sort of cases. Uh, and a lot of the time they'll take multiple appointments as well, which is nice to, to build a relationship with a patient or two. Um, so I want to run through how I treated uh, this gentleman here. I saw him, uh, I think, uh, summer, summer of last year. 
Um, and yeah, he been in uh, routines of NHS healthcare for a while and just wasn't happy with his teeth and wanted to get them all fixed up. So this is him a bit closer up and then we can pull the lips out of the way. And this is one of these cases where there's a lot of stuff going on. And this was a really fun one to do. So we've got quite a few bits. So he's already got a denture. So we've got the front tooth there and then he's got a couple of the teeth back here, but they're very, very short. He's got a tooth that's buried itself underneath, which is, I still don't know how that happened. Uh, and then he's got lots of broken teeth, broken roots. He's got some gum disease that this tooth is really wobbly and the molar teeth are wobbly. Uh, and then because he's been missing the bottom teeth for a while, he's closed over. So he hasn't got a lot of space to do any work really. So we had to really what we call reorganize him. So this is not a, a simple, a simple case, but I just wanted to show it because it's got a lot of different elements going on. So he'd also worn down the teeth a lot. You can see how sort of sharp and flattened off the teeth down there on the bottom are. So we had to look at trying to fix that as well. So the first bit that you do when you're doing some dentures is you're going to make some molds or take some impressions and you're going to do a set for each. So actually took out, you can just see the sort of lump at the back here and here. So two of the big molar teeth that were very, very wobbly, I actually took those out first because um, I was worried that I was going to take them out in the material. So this starts as a runny material and you put it into the mouth and it sets. I was worried I was actually going to take those teeth out by doing that. So I thought I'm going to take them out first. So the set for the top, not my best ones, lots of bubbles and defects here. And the bottom one was a little bit nicer. So that's for the bottom jaw there. And then what they do is they pour the lab, you send this off to your laboratory. They pour these up in stone typically, uh, and then they make you some trays, some impression trays that fit the patient better. So then you can take the nicer set of models. So there's the second model on the top. You can see much, much smoother. These have healed really nicely, but we've got a lot more detail around the back where the, the denture, the face is going to sit compared to the first one where you're just getting a one size fits all and just trying to make it work. Uh, and then on the bottom, the bottom one was pretty good. The first one, but again, we just got a nicer, smoother, uh, model that we've used and again I took the bottom front tooth out as well the one that was very wobbly at the bottom there so again I took that one out before we did it for the same reason so then once you've done that you've got these really nice models that you can build your denture upon and you're going to set up how their jaws are biting together so for this chap it was quite difficult because none of his teeth actually met together. So we had to decide how it was going to be. So what the lab sends us are these wax blocks, and these are simulating the denture. And what we do is we fit them into the mouth and we adjust them. And what we're saying is where the bottom of that pink of the wax is, that's where we want the teeth to end. So we're doing some cosmetics here. We're looking at the face, we're blending it in. So I've drawn a line in the middle of the patient's face, although it's a little bit wonky actually, isn't it? Um, but the idea is that you have it right bang down the middle. And then you're looking to get that wax block to follow the shape of the lower lip. You're basically designing where they're going to put the teeth first. You do the top one there. Uh, and then you get the bottom one to fit into that. And then you get the patient to bite together with a runny material in between the teeth. So that's what this purple stuff is. So once I was happy that I'd set the patient up in that position, and I got them to bite together and it looked it looked right. I put this purple material again, which was running material in between and got them to bite into it. And that way it stuck it all together. So the lab could put those models together and knew what the patient was looking like when they bit together. So then we get some more wax, but this time it put the technician puts the teeth into it. So we had to pick a color for the teeth, depending on what brand you use. There are 16, 20 different colors of the teeth. Uh, all shades of white, no interesting colors, but you get them to pickle that and they fit it in. And again, you've got, they've used that line from earlier. You know, that line has decided where the midline of the denture is going to be. And that was where it was handy to send this picture because my technician knew we had to move it slightly over to that side to make it look better. So we were quite happy with that. So we got the dentures made up. So you'll have noticed that actually he had a few of these teeth before. So we had that little short tooth underneath. So at the moment we'd actually built over the top of it. 
But what I was planning to do actually was to take out those broken teeth at the very end. So that's what we did. So we got the dentures made up. There's the top one there and the bottom one there. And then we can do the extraction. So we took out the roots that were broken up here, this one that was short, and then the two roots here. And this one had already gone. And then what I also wanted to do was fix up the worn down teeth down there on the bottom. So I used some white filling material, composite white filling material to blend that in and build the shape of those back up. And then this will just show a little transition between the start and the finish to see where we ended up. And that was on the day that we did the surgery. So that's why there's a little bit of bleeding and blood around there. Um, but that essentially was how we we converted them over. And you can just about see on the bottom there, sort of where we've added these little bits of the filling to fan out that tooth. So if we look just down on that corner, you can see we've added that white filling in there to build that shape of that tooth back up again. So that's where we ended up. And um, but he was he was super happy with it. And there he is at the end. So quite a big change. And this is what I enjoy about it. You can make a real big change to this. And the nice thing for this chap, I'm hoping the next picture is the one I think it is. Yeah. So the nice pit, the nice thing with this is you can look at it looks like two different people. Yeah. So this guy is he's 10 years younger here. And all and that this is a, a few things here. So one is a bit of confidence. He's happier with his smile. But also what we've done when we've added in the dentures there is we've properly supported the the lips and the cheeks. You know, we've pushed those lips forward. And when you're when he was too close because he didn't have those stops and those teeth were coming down and up. When you're too close, your jaw on the bottom moves forwards and actually your face, your lower third of your face gets shorter. So you can actually see the difference between them there and you see a lot more a lot more wrinkles in the lower third of the face and things like that so that's why i like this whole barrier dentistry it really gives you a um more control and you can make these big big changes here so hopefully that was a nice little run through of dentures um i've absolutely blitzed through that so i hope i've <laughs> given plenty of time <clears throat> for some questions um but yeah i don't know that much about the american system but i'll try my best to give any advice but uh yeah yeah, thank you so much. That was super informative. And I loved that case. You really could see how that guy transformed his whole appearance just through the teeth there. So with that, have you ever thought of specializing in prosthodontics? Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, it's an area that I'm interested in. It's quite a competitive uh, competitive field. Um, but you know, it's, it's hopefully something that I want to go on to do. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's tricky, but I'm just enjoying finding my feet at the moment. And what makes you so, um, what, what part of it do you love so much? Does these seem these kinds of transformations or? Yeah, you can, you can, you can change a lot, but I like, like, this is quite a complicated, um, case. And when I, I'm, I'm doing this for another lecture next week, actually, um, for some dental students as well. And when I actually sat down and did that and next week I'm doing it in a bit more sort of detail and I looked at it and I looked back and I thought actually this was really complicated with the way that his teeth were and how he had to bite together but actually it went really really smoothly because we just mm -hmm. thought about it a lot we planned it I worked with my technician who makes the dentures in the laboratory and you when you you can just sit there and really think and I just enjoy that sort of um yeah mind's eye third you know 3d planning and things like that it's really it's just yeah i find it really fun but other kind of problem solving in a way yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah problem solving is really good and that's the kind of thing so i don't know what your um sort of application processes are like and things like that but a lot of what we have to do in our uk applications or personal statements or whatever it is you know if you talk about you know i enjoy this sort of problem solving and spatial awareness and 3d stuff and like that's a, an important sort of skill set to to show here yeah so with that uk can you tell us a little bit more about the application like i know you you said you don't have the dat you have a different test yeah so the uk it's called UCAT now um 
it's been about eight years since I sat it. So, um, <laughs> but no, it's uh, there's sort of I think five or six different sections, sort of like uh, maths, maths, verbal reasoning. Um, there is a three D spatial awareness thing, sort of. Okay. I think it, I think I seem to remember it being a sort of like different shapes of like lots of different cubes stacked together, looking at different angles. You know, which two shapes are the same and seeing how, if you could work that out. Then there was sort of ethical ethical questions it's called uh we call it sjt here situational judgment test sort of you know um there's a situation these are the five ways that you could react which one's the best one and things like that sort of like looking at ethics and how you think about those kind of things okay. um so the, yeah it's a multi-different stage thing but uh i'm sure you guys have a similar a similar kind of entry exam. Yeah, it sounds pretty similar to the DAP from what I could imagine. I haven't written it yet, but <laughs> it does sound similar. Um, so you mentioned you have a podcast. Could you talk about that a little bit more? It sounds super interesting. Yeah, sure. So it's a it's a weekly session um, called Impression Club Live. So I actually record it on Instagram. Okay. Uh, Right, it's right down at the bottom there. Uh, Dentist Rupert, so everyone go and follow me. Cheers. Um, but I do that once once a week with um, mostly UK dentists, but a few a few American dentists. So I've got an American chap, uh, Doctor Sonada, coming on um, next two weeks time, three weeks time. But essentially, they're various different uh, dentists from the UK in different specialties, general dentistry, and they just we just have a chat about you know, their sort of top tips and, and things like that. And I've started now to turn that into a into a podcast. So all of the old episodes are saved as the videos on my Instagram. But the first 16 or something are available wherever you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple, whatever. If you search in the Impression Club Live podcast, you'll find that. And I've stuck a few on YouTube as well. Um, but yeah, it's just with various different dentists. I enjoy it. It's, it's a lot of extra work. Mm -hmm. um, but it's nice to sort of connect and share the passion with with other people and, and things like that and yeah it, it's cool just having a platform for people to to share dentistry with yeah that's that's great um what made you decide to start it um it sort of started by accident to be fair so i was sharing cases on on my instagram so i share a lot of sort of denture tips and I would get the same four or five questions all the oh. time. So I thought, well, I'll, what I'll do is I'll do some videos with, with my technician and we'll talk through like a case like, like this chap and we'll talk through a few of our cases. And then if someone asks me a question about that, I can say, go and watch video number three, because that'll answer it. So it was, it was out of laziness really. Um, <laughs> but actually I did the very first one and then, uh, a, a quite famous UK dentist wrote to me and was like, oh, that was really good. You should do, you should do some other, other topics. And I sort of joked and he was like, oh yeah, do you want to do one? And he was like, yeah, that'd be great. And I was like, oh, okay. And then it just, and now we're on episode 48. So oh, it just wow. sort of, um, yeah, spiraled out of nowhere. It was about this time last year. I think the first one was, yeah, second week of February, something like that last year. Um, yeah, now it's just this whole different thing. That's great. So it just took off and now, I guess you have that platform to, share the passion with other dentists. And now I'm just stuck doing it forever, yeah. <laughs> so you had also mentioned that in the UK, you could get into dental school right out of high school, I think, or pretty early on. Uh, what age do you guys finish high school? Um, when you turn 18. Fine, so yeah, we, we call high school finishing at 16. Uh, and then you go to sixth form college. So yeah, so now after 18, you can go straight in. So that's what I did as an undergraduate. Um, so yeah, so you can go, there is no, you can do it as a postgraduate. Um, you can, if you do a science degree or something like that, you can then do a four year dentistry. So you join in second year. Um, but if you haven't done any other degree, you can go straight from high school, as you guys would say at 18, uh, mm -hmm. as an undergraduate and just do five year dental degree. Um, okay. And if you're a, if you're a doctor before that, you can do a three year dental degree as well. If you because some people want to do both to do maxillofacial, head and neck surgery. But yeah, oh, in the UK, you cool. can do it as an undergraduate. Whereas you guys are stuck, right? You have to do a pre med. Yeah. yeah, you have to do some prerequisite courses before 
since you went in pretty early, how did you know that you this was something you wanted to do? Yeah, that's, that's the way. I think that's the good thing with with the North American system is it does give you that bit of extra time. Because um, I was saying, uh, I with the way our system works is when you're 15, 16, you do your your GCSEs and then you do your A level exams, your final exams when you're 17, 18. Oh. But to do the right A levels, you have to sit the right GCSEs and do well in them, kind of thing. So you have to know by 16 that that's what you want to do, kind of thing. So it is quite quite tough. Um, yeah. I just sort of fancied it one day. To be fair, I was at my <laughs> I always thought I'd do something science to your medicine. Um, and then I was at my dentist and he was doing uh, some sealants on my teeth. And I was like, oh, why are you doing you know, What's that step? What's this for? Why is that? And I was like, oh, this is quite interesting. And we actually had, as part of my school at the time, in the summer, the summer term, they did a, a work experience week where there were no lessons and you had to go and do work experience. And I didn't have anything planned. I was just going to um, follow my dad, who's an accountant, and he works from home. So I was just going to have a week off. Um, but then I thought, you know what, this is interesting. I'm going to see. So I just did it with my dentist. I shadowed him for a week and yeah, just found it really interesting and, and went for it. And luckily it, it worked out. But um, yeah. I think for a lot, a lot of people, it is tough. You do it at, yeah, you decide at 17 and there's nothing in high school that is anywhere near like doing dentistry. So you just don't know. Whereas I think for you guys, it's probably a bit better, actually. You get that bit a bit more time. You're a bit more of a mature student as well because you'll be, what, 21, 22 when you start? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. A, lot, a lot of it sort of... Mm -hmm. Some people are literally turning 18 th two weeks before they go in. So it can be quite um, quite difficult, I think. I'm kind of jealous about that, but... <laughs> so what would you say is the most exciting part of your job for you? I think at the minute I'm really enjoying the with the the extra online stuff that I'm doing. Oh. I'm just meeting a lot of other people and meeting a lot of other dentists and it's just really enjoyable so yeah, meeting like minded people like that. And yeah, I, I'm I'm very fortunate that my I work in a really nice practice that I really enjoy working in and I get to do a lot of a lot of nice work uh with nice patients, which helps. Um but yeah, at the moment, I'm just really enjoying all this sort of extra bit. I'm getting involved in societies and yeah, just sort of net, the networking and, and meeting just like-minded people, which is great. So maybe through COVID, that has helped that a little bit, that aspect of it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So because there's been a lot more sort of the online push. I mean, pre, pre-COVID, my sort of Instagram was super tiny and I just had, we had two months, two and a half months of that lockdown first lockdown 8 March to June where we couldn't work or anything like that so yeah. I've just spent time online watching webinars watching YouTube videos watching other people doing live sessions on Instagram and things like that so yeah it definitely sort of kick-started that side of it but now it's nice to uh, even even yesterday I met a, um, a dentist who works around the corner that we've chatted loads online and it's the whole like, oh it's nice to meet you in person kind of thing and actually you feel like you know these people which is yeah good fun that's super cool and it's great that something good came out of it all i guess and then for you i know you work with families so maybe sometimes people can be nervous or something like that how do you deal with those sorts of patients yeah i mean i do i so the 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 lady that i replaced well actually the she was the the lead dentist the practice owner um, she retired last year and I took over her book when I went full time and she did a lot of the anxious patients. So, um, so, I, so I now see a lot of them, but I think a lot of it's just sort of talking to them, making sit, trying to find out what particularly is they're anxious about. Some people are just terrified and nothing you do is going to, going to help, but I think just trying to show some empathy and sympathy and I'm in the, the good position where, We've got lots of time. We're not rushed. We can really just sit there and if we want to just chat to the patient for half an hour and not do any dentistry, we can do that. And just like building that relationship, which is good. Um, for people who are really anxious, we, we do sedation, which helps. Uh, two of my patients today were, were sedated. They came in and with an escort an hour early and had some medicine that calmed them down and then they're really nice to treat, um, which, which, which is handy. And... Uh, you know, other people do, uh, you know, gas and air and things like that. 
so that helps but yeah a lot of it is communication is the important thing and just getting to know people and and easing them in and things like that but you get taught a lot of the techniques but i think the main thing is is communication skills and that's always a big part of the application process here is demonstrating that you've got those skills whether it's through doing you know team sports or volunteering or or whatever it kind of is you you're showing that and obviously you probably have interviews as well to to affirm that but yeah communication skills is, is good and you get taught some but just practicing it in in day-to-day life as well is important yeah it sounds like a big part of it is just also to help them feel more comfortable and all and to build those relationships as well the communication yeah, skills even, even if they're not particularly anxious even if even if they're not anxious it's a massive part of of the job um so yeah the, the communication is the massive thing and that's where that's the sort of issue i have with um dentistry at least in the uk dental school wise is that it's so so competitive now like you have to get a star a you know you've got to be in the top like half a percent of people in the country kind of thing and a lot of people that do that are just really you know nerdy and and good at exams and maybe actually don't have the the communication skills that are important at the end they might be able to pass all the exams but uh, maybe not have the soft skills we call them so i think it is massively important yeah it's good to keep in mind so with that do you like that part of the job like going in to work every day and talking to everyone or do you sometimes get tired of talking at the end of the day oh absolutely absolutely i mean i had on on wednesday i think i had uh I think, I think it was six new patients. So in oh. our practice, our new patient consultations are booked for one hour. And I think it was a, an eight hour working day. So six of my eight hours of working were, you know, just one hour solid with one patient, really, you know, trying to build that relationship. And there's a lot of thinking and planning as well. And yeah, by the end of a day like that, it's you're quite sort of drained. Um, but absolutely, I mean, that was one of the bigger things for coming out of lockdown. About two and a half months we didn't I, I didn't see any patients or things like that is you really realized how sociable the job is because a lot of the time you are just having chit chat and even if it's the same conversation that you have every single time about oh are you going on any holidays and all oh, how was covid and how was lockdown and you know was your christmas cancelled and all that kind of stuff yeah. how's your work how's working from home but actually just sitting there and having a bit of chit chat i really missed it during and during the first lockdown, so yeah, it was it was interesting to see that uh, that sort of realize it and appreciate it a lot more when it was gone. Yeah, especially talking to real people one on one. I'm sure instead of just texting or maybe FaceTiming, yeah. <laughs> a lot different in person. <laughs> so, how hard or easy was it for you to find a job right after dental school? Yeah, so I think it was, well, from the U- the UK side of it, so the, that foundation year, it's pretty much guaranteed that you get a job. And it's that okay. one year training contract. Uh, and then after that, you are, you're just applying for normal jobs. And the environment at the moment with COVID is quite tricky. Um, it seems more actually that if you are willing to go and do one of the NHS jobs, there's going to be lots of choice because no one can uh, no one can hire anyone at the moment. They're struggling to get people who want to go and do that job. Um, but it's it's not too bad. I think the overall sort of graduate percentage in the UK is like ninety nine percent employed out of dental school. So it, it's it works pretty well. But it's more in the UK in a way it's like finding the right job yeah things like that, that which is, yeah, you can you can go and do one uh yeah i mean i got i got really lucky with my job so my my one that i'm in now i i, I met i met the the lady who owns the practice at a, at a conference that i won tickets for and just decided oh, really? to go and yeah it just it was you know blind blind luck kind of thing but it took me time to build up because you know it's a higher level and i just graduated it took me a long time to sort of prove I was good enough kind of thing um, but my my NHS practice the Fulham practice it was a good busy practice but it just the the system wasn't for me and it sort of really burnt me out and I was very you know I was struggling and very tired and drained and you know just yeah 
So just that 2019 Christmas, I was really struggling with it. So yeah, I couldn't have stayed in that job for much longer than than I did. So that that side of it can be hard, and there are certainly people who've had bigger bigger troubles than I have as well. Um, but yeah, that that bit can be tough. And that's when you're working five and a half days a week. Is that the? Yes, yeah, so I, was, I was I was doing the five full days and the half day in in London, and then the other half Saturday as well. Um, so that was the other bit now and yeah, I would never go back to doing that much work now because it's just, uh, it's all consuming. Yeah, that's super draining, I bet. And now you're working four days, was it a week? Is that with that, yeah. you have a lot of, can do your hours vary or is it pretty set in stone? So really, once you once you graduate, you've got a lot of flexibility and that's one of the really good things about, about dentistry as a career as a whole, you can you know, even if you do two days, three days, you can still earn really nicely. And actually you sort of get more efficient almost the less days you do. You know, if you do four days or two days, you don't necessarily do half as much work and earn half as much money because actually you're sort of, you do sort of maybe a higher proportion of the treatment rather than the checkups, which you don't earn as much from and things like that. So actually um, you can do sort of maybe three days instead of four and not, lose that much income and things like that okay um and you and you know if you're having more time off actually you can be a bit more sort of energized and and ready to go when you're there but i think it's a really good career for um you know if you want families and things like that um you know cliche but particularly for for women it's good because you know you can sort of you can do a couple of days and things like that so no it's it's definitely good from that things uh, i'm enjoying my four days my thursdays is what i have off and that's when i'm making these lectures or making the content for instagram and the, the uh, editing you know, i'll be editing a podcast tomorrow morning on my way to work um so that yeah that extra time i could maybe do three and a half days a week uh but yeah no i'm enjoying it at the moment it's working well but yeah that flexibility is is really handy yeah, so it sounds like there's a lot of flexibility, at least for you. That's really no, nice. def- definitely, and you, you know, you just there a lot of places will be looking for a part-time dentist, a two-day a week job. So you could take a couple of two-day a week jobs in different practices, and that's just how it works quite often. Often here, so, you know, it's not everyone is in one practice. I I was doing two days in one, two days in the other, uh, this time last year, and um, so you could quite easily. Yeah, do a three day a week somewhere and another day somewhere else or or whatever it works quite nicely that way whether it does the exact same in the u.s i don't know but i imagine it does yeah that sounds great <laughs> especially if i ever <laughs> want to go to the uk i guess and work there and have that in mind yeah. <laughs> so i know this job can have stre- like stress attached with it like any job how do you manage that stress badly a lot of the time um <laughs> no i think um it definitely is it's difficult i mean in the uk it's uh dentistry has like the highest suicide rate mm-hmm. it's something that's not really talked about that much of any profession um we i think there's a bit more sort of awareness for it now but it's very very stressful a lot of that is uh the nhs system which is just this ridiculous system where a patient needs one filling or ten fillings you get paid the same and all this kind of oh. stuff so you're doing a lot of it's very number driven and you're on a treadmill and it's just crazy. Um, so that can be very stressful. And then a lot of the time, you know, you're dealing with people who don't want to be there, even if they're not that anxious, no one really likes being at the dentist. Um, and there can be lots of pressures and, you know, demanding patients and things like that. So again, it's learning to deal with people. If you can deal with the people well in those situations that are difficult from that side of it, then that's, that's great. That's one less stressor. The working environment is always just going to be quite intense anyway. And physically as well, you know, back and neck and things like that, it can be yeah. pretty hard on that side of things too. So you got to, uh, you've got to look after yourself that way as well. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of factors to it. But so I know with COVID, there might be more changes occurring. So what kind of changes are occurring in this field, whether it's from COVID or just in general? Yeah, so code, code was a lot of it was a lot of changes initially, obviously, and a lot more sort of strictness on the protective gear that we had to wear, and the procedures that you had to do in between, uh, in between seeing patients and, and so forth. But those have sort of gradually decreased. Um, I think the bigger problem 
from from COVID now really is going to be, or at least in the UK, we've just gone yesterday to saying, you know, just do whatever you want. If you if you're positive, you haven't got to isolate or anything. Like that. Dentists know, really? but the general public, yeah, yeah. So the the general public they're saying now, if you if you're positive, you haven't got to isolate. You should, but you don't have to, and things like that. So it could be quite tricky the next few weeks if we have patients calling up and like, well, I can, I, I'm allowed to go to the shop, so I'm going to come here. And I was like, no. <laughs> um, but I think our bigger problem is like with staffing overall. So like nurses and reception team and things like that. So particularly for the nurses, it's really hard to hire nurses at the moment. Uh, I think because their job has got so much harder. They've had to oh, do yeah. way more cleaning, and they've got to wear all this protective gear, and and you know it's it's a tough it was a, it's a tough job anyway. But then um, they've added all these extra bits, which makes it even harder. So we're struggling with that side of things, recruitment, and in the UK and Brexit and all that. We're struggling with that as well because um, a lot of people went home to look after family for COVID and then they've not come back. So we're missing loads of workers as well from oh. that point of view. Um, so those are sort of the challenges. I think from a, the actual dentistry side of it now, it's not that bad. You know, you've got to wear a different mask and maybe wear a gown if you're doing something with lots of spray, but it, we're sort of used to it now. We've been doing it for two years. Whether it will completely go away or not, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I think it will. Uh, but it's... Yeah, it was a big change at first. That first few weeks coming back in June 2020, it was like so much more to think about. And right, once we've done this, we've got to go and do that and take this off like in this order and all this kind of stuff. But it's, wow. it's relaxed a lot now, so that's fine. Yeah, that's good. It seems like COVID is coming to an end. Like it's not leaving, but everything's more relaxed. So that's good yeah. and bad. <laughs> yeah. So how do individuals in this field move into management positions if they want to open the office or send like things like that well in terms of like setting up a practice yes yeah okay so yeah so it's a lot of a lot of young dentists are doing it a lot of people in my year or the year below have bought into practices and and, and so forth so in the uk system it well, appears to be relatively easy to do <laughs> uh not sure it's something that i would fancy at the moment i think it's uh, that it brings its own stresses yeah. um you know it's mine's you know for uh, when it's your business there's lots of lots of extra thinking to do whereas i you know i finish at four i finish at six i can go home and well not tonight i'm thinking about dentistry tonight but you, know, <laughs> you can just go home and the problems sort of stop and things like that but um yeah in the uk anyway you've got to obviously get some get some money behind you whether that's a loan or uh mum and dad or whatever but you can move into into that and if you've been you know in a practice for a reasonable amount of time you may sort of have a more sort of senior lead and sort of go into being a you know like a director clinical director or things like that but yeah it, there's loads of different avenues and there's loads of things you can do within dentistry which is great yeah that's great I know your favorite it seems like one of your favorite things to do within this field is dentures what's your least favorite if you have one <laughs> um yeah that's that's a good one um to be fair i enjoy pretty much all all general dentistry um and that's why i do enjoy being general dentist i'd love to go and specialize but i think a little part of me would still want i really i really enjoy um you know treating children and things like that although that that is really stressful you know having to do you know, fillings or taking teeth out of, of little kids and things like that. It's rewarding, yeah. but it's really stressful. Um, I think probably for me, it would be like gum treatment, periodontal treatment uh, is probably my least favorite, mainly because it's the bit I've done the least in and I just know the least about. And I think in my sort of practice environment that I'm in where the specialists do pretty much everything is when I look at what they do, I think, wow, that's really good. I couldn't do that kind of gum treatment, that level of gum treatment. Whereas the other bits, I'm not as good as the no, as good at root canals or something as the root canal specialists, but I did, I've done more of them. So I'm better. So I think probably that, but that's more from a, just, I don't know enough about it. Yeah, that makes sense. And what was your favorite part of dental school? 
awesome. <laughs> I think, yeah, it was, it was just a really great experience. I met some fantastic people. Um, and compared to working, it's such a, like, it's such a much like less stressful. So you think at the time, you know, all these exams, you know, every eight weeks we had exams in final year and things like that. But yeah, yeah actually now it's just so compared to that, this it was like a breeze. So, um, yeah, it was just a great time. And I was doing a lot of my sports still. I was um, swimming a lot and then I was doing coaching and things like that as well. It was a nice balance. Whereas now with work, I can't do any of those other things as well. So it was enjoying having a bit more sort of maybe a variety of, of, of stuff going on. That's funny how you were able to have that balance during dental school, whereas I would have imagined that'd be a lot more time consuming than now, but I guess it's maybe that changes. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's not even necessarily the, the time. It's just the, the energy it sort of takes uh, out of, you know, come back at the end of the day and just like, ah, that yeah, do. that makes sense then. So I know you said there's flexibility with hours and kind of days you can work. Is there also a flexibility with location? Like if you had wanted to move to Canada, like North America or somewhere, would there be that option for you? So North America is difficult because I, I, I don't think the, the US, Canada might be different. I don't think the US acknowledges the, the BDS degree that we have. Okay. Um, Canada might there's a bit of a loophole where if you go and do I think if you go and do specialist training in America you could you could apply to go and do prosthodontics periodontics whatever go and do that for the three years or whatever it is and then you'll have an American specialty and then you could go and work as a specialist in America okay and you could and you could bring it back to the UK um but you I couldn't go you know and move to wherever the next month and go work I wouldn't be able to do that I think you have to go and sit maybe even it might be like the final exams okay you know, so you maybe American dental school that. final you have to go and do like equivalency um and probably have like a sponsor or something like that so I bet um, there is I think the other way it might be it might be different but uh yeah but it's possible it's possible but not yeah easy. it sounds like there is but it's just harder to like you have to do that exam type thing yeah yeah and it's organizing it and things like that but um but yeah within the uk and things like that it's easy and it used to be for europe as well but whether brexit will stop that for us i don't know okay it's a little bit of flexibility there that's nice (laughs) is the atmosphere of your workplace competitive friendly a bit of both and comparison to your other job as well so my, my yeah, my current place now is 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 super friendly. I think we've got just a really good team. And the nice bit with our place there is that we've all got our own little interests. Even the general guys, we all have a different thing that we're interested in. So we're always sort of sending patients to each other and things like that. Um even my other practice, I wouldn't say it was it wasn't like competitive or anything like that, but um yeah, just a very different working environment in terms of the system that you're working under and the stresses that that provided. Um but no, I think dental school maybe it was a bit more sort of. There's always people that want to want to be the best and get the best mark yeah. and whatever uh, they can do that. That's fine. Um, but no, I think the sort of mindset now, anyway, of the sort of uh, the sort of young dentist at the minute is very much sort of like just sharing knowledge and just yeah, no one's really worried about anyone being better than anyone else. That's good then to have that like in your workplace so you had mentioned foundation training was that a year of what is that supposed to you um elaborate on that a little bit yeah so that's the that's the first year after you graduate so it's, it's almost like a sixth year oh. but you're you're not you're not a university so you get in the uk then you you sit in an exam in the i think it's the november of your final year everyone in the country does and they rank you in the whole country from like one to 900 or something and then they tell you all of the jobs essentially in the country and you say well this is my number one job this is my number two job down to 900 as well 
but they break it up into like regions. So you only have to rank like 30 regions and then they tell you the jobs within that. And you basically get allocated a uh, job. So I did really badly and I got sent to Hull, um, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, and then you go there and you're working, you're paid, not that much, but you're on a, you know, compared to being a student, you're like, I think you're an absolute baller. Um, but you go there and you've got someone looking after you. So there's a, someone who's a paid trainer who's one of the other dentists in the practice. And, you know, you're meant to meet with them once a week and, you know, do a tutorial and talk through what you've done. And if you need help, you know, they come in. So it's just to sort of like ease you into practice and more give you more experience. I think particularly for the last two years of graduates, they've not really done anything at dental school because you do it all in your fourth year and your fifth year. And I think the ones that just graduated in September, they had fourth year and fifth year during COVID and they couldn't see anyone because the hospitals were shut down. So wow. it's probably quite a steep learning curve for them. Um, but, you know, it's just to get you speeding up in, in dental school. You might see like two patients in the morning or two patients in a day. And then, you know, I remember my, at the end of my first week, I was seeing 25 patients in in the foundation year kind of thing. So, you oh, know, wow. you're suddenly thrown in and you've got to go for it. So it's just to sort of ease you in. And then that's like a one-year contract. And then you can go into hospital so you can then apply for these hospital jobs it's called core training so you've got foundation training and core training i didn't do any core training um a lot of my friends did and it's the similar kind of process they sit an interview you get ranked and then you go into to work in the hospital usually in the maxillofacial the head and neck um but, or sometimes you'll have the gen the different specialties will have a department as well or you know, pediatrics or surgery or or whatever um but yeah I, that wasn't of any interest to me but some people like to go and do that and get more experience in different bits so you can cool. do that for two or three years if you want to as well but i just wow. went straight into normal practice that's cool that's really great to ease you into it rather than just going the as you said one or two patients a day or so <laughs> into that so I'm not sure how many dental schools there are in the UK, but what made you decide to go to the one that you did go to? It was the only one that gave me an offer. Uh, so I didn't really have much choice. Um, there's, for undergraduates, I think it's 14 dental schools. And for postgraduates, I think there are a couple more that you can go and do um, postgraduate dentistry at. So there's not really a lot of choice. Um, but yeah, I mean, King's is a, it's a great university. It's got a fantastic reputation, lots of really good teachers. So I wouldn't change. It was actually my, my fourth choice as well. So in the UK, you can only do four choices for your oh. university, for, for dentistry. Um, yeah. My other three were really good swimming universities. I just wanted to carry on with my swimming and it was harder <laughs> in London. So that was why it was my fourth choice, but it was you know meant to be the best and, and things like that. So I still sort of applied for it, sort of try, try it out and see. And um, I got the offer quite quickly. So I was thinking, oh, great, I'm going to go to Leeds. I'm going to get into my other one because this is going to be harder. And then I didn't get in. Um, see, I didn't have a choice in the end. But I, again, I wouldn't have changed it. It all sort of worked out really nicely. And it was a, it was a fantastic place to go. Um, I say, you know, all the textbooks in the UK, they were all written by the people who taught us. So, you know, we got really good teaching there. Well, that's good that it worked out though. And then how much clinic time do you get in dental school? We definitely had more than the current lot do um, because I think yeah, COVID has made it very difficult. I think we started doing a little bit, like should we, I think in first year we would shadow like the final years. Okay. So you just literally like sit there and watch the final years, but it sort of lets you see what it's all about. And then I think the end of, maybe the end of the second year, we started doing a simple scale and polished cleaning. And then third year, we started seeing patients a reasonable amount. I think we were doing maybe two days a week where we saw patients, one okay. for doing surgery and just taking out teeth and the other for the assessment clinics and things like that. So 
you sort of feed into the hospital's whole system. So like the hospital would be seeing um, patients that dentists from all around London, like Kings from all around London would refer them into to the King's Hospital to be seen by the consultants and then have the students doing the main assessment. And then you'd report to the consultant who then, you know, come around one of the bays to check. So you start to look at doing exams and things like that. And then fourth and fifth year, it steps up quite a lot. And you're doing fourth year, I think maybe probably three or four days. And then fifth year is pretty much four days, five days a week, nine to five clinics all the time. So it does, it ramps up quite a bit. Um, but I imagine, yeah, I imagine at the moment with COVID, it's quite, it's quite difficult. But I think it varies quite a bit when you start based on your school. Okay. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what it would be like in the States. I imagine if you've done your sort of pre-med stuff before, is it then four years? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. So then you probably jump in a bit earlier, whereas like ours with the undergraduate, we have to do all that pre-med biochemistry learning oh. in the first few years in the first you know two years so there's a lot of lectures in the first two years so you haven't got a lot of time to do a lot of teeth so you're kind of doing your prerequisites while you're already in it in a way yeah so it's been like the first two years was like very very intense i guess that's good to get that over with though at the same time <laughs> yeah and do you have a typical day in the life um I say every, every, every day is pretty different, but um, yeah, I, at the moment I'm typically, you know, my mon Monday to Wednesday, um, yeah, Monday I'm 8, 8.15 till 6, and I'll probably see 8 to 12 patients, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, usually a few checkups, some days I'll have more just treatments and things like that, but I'm generally doing a little bit of everything. Uh, usually just sort of routine fillings, crowns, um, and, and hopefully a denture to, to keep me happy. Um, but no, nothing, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's always varied, but never too, too sort of out there either. Um, but yeah, and then some days I finish at four o'clock, I'm back home mm. in, in town by, by five o'clock. It's, you know, it's quite, quite chilled, quite easy. Tomorrow morning, I'm just literally doing, I think it's just all checkups for four hours and then one one filling at the end and hopefully no one calls up with with toothache for an emergency but yeah it just it, it varies it varies a lot but uh it's always pretty pretty casual in terms of the number of patients i've seen now that's nice to have that variety but it keeps it exciting at the same time yeah yeah there's, there's always something interesting that, that's coming around i'm sure so i just have one last question do you have any tips for any pre-dental students who are wanting to go into it? Just anything at all? <laughs> so we're pre, um, so by that means of what doing the pre-med stuff or just thinking about, or any stage? Just anything. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think um, obviously like working on an application, you've probably got a statement of some sort. So just trying to do as much stuff as you can. I mean, anyone who's sat there watching this at, what time is it over there? Three in the afternoon or something on a Friday afternoon. Fair enough. Um, but doing stuff like this, you're probably would do, already doing the right thing. Um, obviously, subscribing to my mail list and podcasts would be really good. Um, I'm joking, uh, but please do. Um, but I think just doing enough stuff to know what it's about is going to be important. And just having an awareness of maybe some stuff that's going on in dentistry. Like if you had an interview coming up or something like that, being aware of what COVID's done to dentistry, okay. being aware of, you know, say you're going to a certain university for an interview, doing a quick bit of research about what projects they've got on. They might be doing some really cool research and you never know the person who's doing that research might be on the interview panel and they'd be really impressed that you've looked into it and just yeah. try and get some experience in a, in a clinic if you can. I don't know what it's like in, in America, but pre-COVID I would have um, students in with me quite often, just sort of watching, uh, but about high school students, I mean, um, just watching things like that because you need to get an idea of what it's about and yeah. actually seeing a day-to-day -day is, is really, really good. So I think, yeah, try and get as much of an idea of it as you can because it's an unusual career and, you know, it's, a, it's not something that you 
it's not been like oh i like maths i'm going to go and do finance you know it's it's yeah. it's very it's a very odd mix of science and art and talking uh, you know you're a psychiatrist an artist uh, engineer all at the same time so it's a uh, which is what makes it so fun but yeah. yeah at the same time it's it's a very unusual thing that you wouldn't experience otherwise so if you can with covid try and try and get in and actually see some see some dentistry see and just see some patient interactions communication and things like that yeah there's a lot of different aspects thank you for that and what was your i think the email list uh was sorry yes so uh <laughs> i've got it on here so is this going to sleep oh there we go uh yeah so if you want to find me on instagram uh dentist rupert youtube as well dentist rupert i'm very easy um yeah. and if you want to get on the mail list about the podcast or or you want to just look at any of the podcast links or episodes uh impressionclub.co.uk um it's got a link to all the youtube podcasts all sorts and you can subscribe to the mail list if you want to get a, a free shiny newsletter every month perfect thank you so much and thank you everyone for coming to watch this today thank you dr monkhouse for sharing your experience as a dental general dentist uh, thank you for having me on cheers guys <laughs>